Hello, bacterious mysterious, bacterious mysterious, bacterious mysterious. Hello, oh, welcome to Art Swarm, episode two of series two, and our theme is bacteria. Oh. And we've got a very interesting programme today. Eight different weird videos on that theme to bring to you, all of which are world premieres, which is the whole um, point of this show. And I also bring special guest Mel Wardle Woodend, who will be talking about her poetry and reading the odd poem tool. Well, we'll begin with a submission by a brand new author. This is by artist Claire Watt, who's a poet who's had work published in Le Mentor, or The Mentor, Cathexis Northwest Press, and Yes Mom magazine. Hope you enjoy this. Des yeux qui font baisser les miens Un rire qui se perd sur sa bouche Voilà le portrait sans retouche De l'homme auquel j'appartiens Quand il me prend dans ses bras Et me parle tout bas Je vois la vie en rose il me dit des mots d'amour, des mots de tous les jours, et ça me fait quelque chose. Il est entré dans mon cœur, une part de bonheur dont je connais la cause. C'est lui pour moi, moi pour lui dans la vie. Il me l'a dit, il a juré pour la vie. Dès que je l'aperçois, alors je sens en moi mon cœur qui part. Des nuits d'amour à plus finir, un grand bonheur qui prend sa place. Des ennuis, des chagrins s'effacent, heureux. And Claire's prose writing will be in an exhibition at Urban Arts Gallery, Utah, entitled Personal Progress This March. Now we'll continue our march along the bacterial journey. This particular piece was, is by Andrew Williams and it involved him having to create a visual basic programme which um, was a simulation of Conway's life. It's a sort of a sinister piece. We are here. We have a dominant one on this planet. Not humanity, but the brain. Thirty-two thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight, sixty-five thousand five hundred and thirty-six, one hundred and thirty-one thousand and seventy-two. We make no machines. We have no weapons. But we are in control. Five hundred and twenty-four thousand five hundred and twenty-four thousand two hundred and eighty-eight, one million forty-eight thousand five hundred and seventy-six. You fight us with your skills and functions, yet you will always play you to the end. 
And my contribution to bacteria is a social satire all about snobbishness. Bacteria. Bacteria. Bacterium. Microscopic organism. Can survive, stay alive and thrive on Earth in every environment, it's fact. From deep sea vents and deep below the Earth to the acidic, hostile human digestive tract. A life form with a single cell but a Jekyll and Hyde double personality. When we think of bacteria, we think of germs, illness, death, mortality. Streptococcus pneumoniae causes pneumonia, a dangerous bacteria, needless to say. But good bacteria exists too. Lactobacillus acidophilus curdles milk into yoghurt for your muller lights and frubes, and helping the gut to digest what it's at is all part of the complex process. Carelessly floating in a twisted thread-like mass called the nucleoid, bacterial DNA floats free. What type will attach itself to you, a friend or an enemy?
and I'm joined by the author of that previous poem, Mel Wardle Woodend. Hello, Mel. Hello. Welcome to Artsmore. Thank you for having me. Um, so you've been, uh, well, how long have you been a poet for? Um, That's a good question. <laughs> it's a good question. Probably since um, I was very little, um, as soon as I could write and do emergent kind of scribble, I was writing um, books and stories and things. Oh, wow. uh, so I've always loved writing ever since I was very little, but I've only so, sort of been publishing for the last four years. Right. I started in 2015 and I, I decided I'd got enough poems to put a collection together. Mm. Um, I'll see how it goes in ebook, and mm. it got such a good reception that I it, I was encouraged to carry on because I just wasn't quite sure how it would you know, how it would go down, but I was you know overwhelmed really with the response. So it prompted me to think actually maybe this is something I could do. It was more of a career rather than just a hobby. Right, um, and mm. and you run workshops and organise poetry yeah. uh, readings and things That's like that right. as well. That's um, right. Now I co-host a monthly poetry slam in Stafford called Word Stafford. Um, which is a platform to try and encourage people to come and have a go at sharing their work. Mm. And also I do workshops and talks in libraries and bookshops around the Midlands and Staffordshire, which is sort of based on this book, Natural Colours, which is my most recent collection. Yes, so uh, how, what, how did that come about? And um... Um, Well, a lot of it was to do with um, the loss of my father and I was grieving and finding solace in writing poetry. Mm. So there's a lot about nature that sort of came from that and I, I started learning more about poetry through my masters that I was studying and learned about the fact that you can use it as a you know an emotional aid to well-being uh, it's something that helped me personally but also yeah. something that I learned can help others so I wrote this collection in order to be able to hopefully reach out to other people and that's what I tried to do with my workshops as well there's a lot of focus on synesthesia and the way that colours affect our moods and feelings. Yeah, I suppose art is a great way of helping you in all sorts of ways, really. Yeah. And I suppose um, the, the connection between poetry and images and sounds and things is all, all quite interesting. Are you, are you synesthetic yourself? You a little think? bit, yeah. I mean, not, not as much as some people I've met are, uh, but I definitely do have associations. When I was little, I always had colours of the week in my mind were, were certain, co sorry, days of the week were certain colours hmm. and different things that come to mind and I would just associate them with a colour. Yeah, So I I'm, think a lot of people have close associations with two different things for some strange reason, maybe they're close in the brain or something right. like that. I'm not sure. Um, so what, no, how many collections have you had? So this, you say this is your latest. Yes, so, um, so this is my fourth adult uh, poetry book and I've also done two dyslexia friendly children's poetry books as well. Oh, brilliant. And last year a children's story which is sort of like, you know, moving away from poetry a little bit to write a story aimed at children. To, to prose. Well, you've also brought a second collection with you which yes. is about something you're working on at the moment. Yeah, this Global Warning is the second anthology that I've put together as Poet in Residence for the There Is No Planet B Stafford, which is an environmental organisation. Um, we have a Green Arts Festival every year in February, hmm. and the idea is to raise awareness of environmental issues and ways that we can make a positive difference. Hmm. So it's aimed at children and adults. And this is a collection by lots of other poets, yes, isn't it? It's an it anthology, is, yeah. and basically anyone could sort of submit a poem That's right. and it was selected. Um, I ran a competition on behalf of No Planet B, and it was there were three categories children young people and adults and then the poems were um, gone through and selected and the ones that I feel gave really strong messages have gone into the anthology oh so where can people get these books are they available on amazon or your website or something they will be available on the no planet b website very soon there's going to be a launch at stafford library on the 9th of february okay so that's only in a couple of weeks which is quite exciting brilliant and then after that they're going to be widely available on the website and, and what, about, what about what your existing collections are they also yeah i have a website that they're available through and facebook writers page as well so people can either buy them through me directly or through amazon brilliant brilliant thanks very much for joining us well, and thank you um, for having me. welcome to arts wall and thanks for joining us oh, here really in enjoying it so now we'll continue on our bacterial journey and thank you mel and now a sort of emotional infection, a wonderful video here by Robert Burgess.
And now my second video is a piece of music which is sort of like an emotional cry about from a single cell. It's called Single Cells Lament. And now a red and white painting of, of shapes that are vaguely bacterial. This is by Art Swarm regular Janie Jones. And we end the show with a bit of joy and fun, a completely uplifting, uh, something that could easily be on a children's television programme, but it's just so fun and, and gorgeous to look at. This is Andrew Williams' great animation. Bacterial sample 704B is demonstrating some particularly unusual properties.
further study is needed. That's it for bacteria. I hope you enjoyed that. Eight marvellous little explorations, wonderful creations, exploitations, bacterial mats crawling all over your excited brain, I think. Well, um, if you wanted to keep track of Artswarm, you can follow us on Twitter at Artswarm TV. That's a good way to see what's coming up. In two weeks' time, we'll have a short, as usual, and then two weeks after that, we'll bring you the next programme, which has a theme of wood. If you'd like to create something on wood, then that would be brilliant. The whole point of the show is that we showcase things that, well, people have made. It doesn't really matter what they're like, providing they're new, providing they're something you've not seen before. Just put yourself in front of a camera and do something wood related. Uh, you can find out more details of how to send stuff by visiting my website markshiki.com slash artswarm.php. Well, I think that's everything. I'll see you next time.